Praise God. Hallelujah. Now listen, I want to trust God that this season of your life, no matter the challenges, that you will stay on top all the time. Because right from the beginning, you are created to know no defeat. You are created to be in charge of truth. You are created to be the king of your environment, to be the king over circumstances and situation. I am Kola Emiela. Now listen, let's go to, right to the word of God. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number one, verse number 26. Now this is one of my favorite Favorite Bible chapter and verses and fact. Ooh, Genesis chapter one. But I always tell people, if man has not failed in the garden, maybe the Bible will be the smallest book that we will have. That's why I love Genesis. So Genesis chapter number one, verse number 26, 27, 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the board of the hair, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping things that creeps on the head. Take note, over all the earth and over every creeping things that creeps on the head. So God created man in his own image and in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the head, and subdue it. Now, when you read uh, Amplified Version, it says subdue it, and then you put in bracket, using all its vast resources in the service of God and of man. Now listen, the word subdue is a big word on its own. The word subdue suggests that God knew from the beginning that there is an enemy that is not going to be happy with what he created, with the man he created, with the garden of Eden, with the beauty, the splendor, the, the, the all supply for situation that man find himself in the garden of Eden where we lack nothing, where we have all the favor, all, all the beauty of the most high. Everything was intentionally created for man. Man was created to dominate everything and nothing was created to rule over man. Man was to be the king on the God of the planet earth of the place called Eden, the planet earth. So the Bible says that man should rule over all the earth and over every creeping thing. So verse number 29, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, uh, 28, and then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the head and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the board of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the head. If it moves on the earth, then I have dominion over it. If it's, no matter how big the animal, no matter how fearful the animal look like, if it moves, if it can move on the earth, then God say, have dominion over it. And God said, I have given you every herb that ye seed, which is on the face of the head, and every tree whose fruit yields seeds to you, it shall be for food. Look at verse 30, and I will stop there. Also to every beast of the, of the head, to every bird of the hair, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Now take note, Genesis chapter number 2 from verse number 15. Oh, glory. Chapter number 2. Then, then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and to keep. God put the man in the garden for two primary in purpose, to tend it, to look after it, and to keep it, to guide it, to make sure that there is no enemy that comes into that garden, or better put God creates a boundary to make sure that no devil cross that boundary, but to watch over that boundary, it is the responsibility of the man he created in his image and in his likeness, or better put, in his image and to function like him. So man was to be the God. Man was to be the one in charge of what God. Now let me say this uh, before I proceed. Every of God gives to you, you have the responsibility to keep it. 
You have the responsibility to protect it. You have the responsibility to make sure that the enemy does not sneak in or creep in to steal it from you. Hallelujah. So then go to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden you shall freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now Genesis chapter number three, verse number one. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, and he said to the woman, and he said to the woman, "Had God in this said, you shall not eat of, the, of every tree of the garden. Now, number one, take notes. The woman or the man is not created to speak to the serpent. You are not created to converse with the enemy. You are not created to talk with your sickness. You are not created to discuss with your lack. You are not created to discuss with that enemy called the devil, that snake, that creeping things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God asks the man to take dominion, to rule, to be in charge over the snake. But what did we see? The woman began to discourse, began to converse with the snake, began to converse with the creeping thing. And the Bible said that creeping thing is very cunning. Hear me. As long as you begin to discuss with your situation, your situation will play you down. It will play on your feeling. It will play on everything around you. Look at how the, that snake twisted the word of God. As God commanded, you should not eat any of the tree. God didn't say they should not eat. God told them they want not to eat, and they told them they want to eat. Two, the snake said they will be like God. They were already in the image and the likeness of God. They don't need to be like God any further. What is the problem? They began to speak with that creeping things. They began to speak with that snake. Now let me read to you again. Hallelujah. So that's why you don't speak with a snake. John chapter number 8, verse number 44. I read from the New International Version. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He, he was a murderer from the beginning and holding to the truth. For there is no truth, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he, speak, he s- speaks his native language, for he, he, when, when he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. No living translation, put it this way. For you are, the, you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. He has always hated the truth <laughs> because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character. For he is a liar and the father of all lies. Now look at how the Bereum Standard Bible puts it. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out his desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, refusing to uphold the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language because he is a liar and the father of all lies. Now, so when you begin to converse with the devil, know this for sure. The devil has no truth in him. He will never tell you the truth. The devil will confuse you about your identity. The devil will not let you know that now there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, the day you accept Jesus, you have stepped into the place called no condemnation. In fact, I like the way the TPP put it, the, the, the Passion Translation, he said, case closed. There is no case against you. God is not angry at you. God is not mad at you. You are the beloved of God. You are the one. You are God's interest on earth. Hallelujah. You are God's interest on heart. Now the devil will not let you know. The devil will not let you know that your healing has been paid for. The devil will like you to believe that your healing will be paid for sometime in the future or when Jesus come and evacuate you and make you to begin to live in this mentality of evacuation. That one day Jesus will come and evacuate you and your sickness will leave you that day. Now your healing has been paid for. Jesus paid 
a good price for your healing. Hallelujah. You pay the good price for your freedom. You don't have to be held by that sickness. You don't have to be held by that sin. The price has been paid. Jesus paid it all on the cross. He said, it is finished. There is no more price. There is no more bargaining about you. The price has been paid. You have been redeemed from the slave market. Satan leg legally now has no right over your life. But as long as you begin to talk with him, he will deceive you. Don't talk with that situation, take dominion. Don't talk with that sickness, take dominion. Don't talk with that lack, take dominion. Take control, establish your rulership. Be in charge and I see you on the top. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life right now. I'll rebook any sickness. I'll rebook any lack. In the name of Jesus, I command the provision of heaven to be made available to you, that you will be able to assess them as you gain the knowledge of the truth of the word of God. You are healed from your head to your toes. I rebook that cancer. I command it to dry completely in the name of Jesus. You are free from diabetes. You are free from high blood pressure. You are free from migraine. You are free. I speak to your uh, uh, spinal cord to line up again. I command that pain to go. In the name of Jesus, I speak favor over your life. I speak to your business enlargement and increase. In the name of Jesus, never again let your circumstances rule you. Take dominion over your situation. Love you. Bye for now. Kola Emiola.